everybody, welcome back to the shop. My name is Doug. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a repeat customer, welcome back. Uh, it's a beautiful July day down here in the shop. We're going to be doing a little bit of lathe work this morning. Uh, what we've got are a couple of pieces that have some custom dimensions. Uh, when I mean custom, uh, they're not just the regular stock sizes. Uh, these were turned down to a specific dimension and we need to hold concentricity with a precision bore going through the center of these pieces. So we'll be using an emergency collet. Uh, to go ahead and accomplish that. If you've never used one, I hope you find this informative. We'll go over to the workbench, uh, kind of give a brief explanation of what this thing does and how we're going to go ahead and prepare for it, and then we'll take a look at how we actually accomplish it. So uh, thanks for joining me. Let's go over to the uh, workbench now and take a look at it. All right, we've got a custom operation uh, here to do on one of our pieces, and that's going to require the use of a uh, emergency collet. If you've never used one of these things before, it's pretty neat. This is a uh, just a mild steel emergency collet. It's of the 5C variety, and uh, I'll show you what this thing looks like. It's pretty neat and uh, allows you a lot of flexibility. You can see the, uh, the 5C taper here, and you've got your uh, 5C thread on there. But what's interesting about it is the face of it. And uh, what we've got here are three dowel pins that have been uh, inserted into the, the three slots so that as you draw up on the collet, the collet closes on the pins and then allows you to machine uh, whatever you need to machine in here, whether it's a custom diameter, uh, if you're using some oddball OD uh, type of an arrangement, or uh, I'll show you what we'll be using. But uh, these, uh, the thing clamps up on the pins, and the collet takes a set so that you can go ahead and do some pretty precision uh, work holding uh, ad adaptive uh, to it. So uh, I'll show you the one that, uh, that I've done already. And it's, uh, it's made for uh, holding a brass uh, cam. It's got a precision, uh, it's got an oddball diameter of uh, 780, so I bored this out to about 785, and then I center drilled it and drilled it through uh, just deep enough so that I can go ahead and finish up the bore uh, with a boring bar to my, uh, to my tolerance to dimension. And uh, when, it's all, uh, when it's all done, of course this has been drawn tight and uh, the ID has been bored out and then the corners have been recessed so that I've got a nice square face on the back and uh, on the diameter. What you end up doing is uh, when you're finished you can you end up moving these around like so. Get out of there. You just have to put the lightest bit of pressure on there. You take these pins out, and then uh, you can go ahead and insert your collet into your scroll chuck or your collet closer, and uh, you'll be able to clamp directly down on this, and then uh, go ahead and perform whatever work you need to have done. So they're really uh, pretty neat. Just mild steel, machines pretty easily. I mean, other than the inter uh, intermittent cut, um, it's a great uh, it's a great work holding. Uh, device if you've got some oddball sizes. So uh, I uh, had to buy just one and the shipping was the same from MSC so I ended up uh, picking two more up thinking at some point I'm going to uh, gonna go ahead and need to uh, to do something else. But uh, you know you can go back in here and, and, and remachine this if you need to. Uh, you just keep the pins inside the box and put them back in. Uh, clamp down on it and do what you need to do. So uh, we'll go over to the lathe. We'll show you how this thing operates and uh, That'll be that. All right, we're over here at the lathe, and uh, let me just explain the setup that I've got here. I've got the uh, emergency collet uh, installed. It's got a uh, through uh, bore uh, that I put in it, and it's also been uh, counterbored for the diameter of the camshaft. Uh, and then the corners of the collet have been recessed a bit so I've got a square edge uh, between the diameter and the inside face of the collet. What we're doing now is just precision boring the, uh, the center hole to go on the crankshaft and I've got a couple of different things here to uh, help me accomplish that. Uh, the first one is is that this counter bore 
I shouldn't say this counter bore, but this through hole doesn't go all the way through. So it's not technically a through hole, uh, but it is bored deep enough so that my boring bar has got plenty of clearance once you come out the back side of the cam. Uh, and that's what this indicator is here for. Uh, this indicator here is just set on zero. It's going to butt up against the end, and that kind of gives me a, an idea as to where the tip of the tool is. So I can go in, read zero, back the tool out, and, uh, and put another one in. Uh, the second indicator uh, right here is uh, designed to give me a little more accurate control over my uh, diameter. I don't necessarily trust this uh, this lead screw in the Grizzly. Uh, I've, I've kind of qualified it uh, a couple of different times, boring things out, turning, and I just get different uh, different dimensions. So this is a little bit easier right now than having to break this whole thing down and start looking at you know putting gauge blocks in there and so on and so forth. So it's kind of a poor man's uh, digital readout for right now. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I back this out to zero and put my piece in, hand feed it across till I hit zero on this indicator, and then I'll bring the tool just back in again for clearance and uh, and back it out, and we should have our uh, our specific diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and crank one of these uh, these bores out. This is what I'm looking at so far. Um, it's uh, been faced on both sides parallel, and the uh, the ODs turned to the max OD on the cam. Uh, from the print, and we're just going to go ahead and make that uh, that center hole uh, the right uh, right diameter. I'll back this out to my zero. Just hand feed it in. Looking at my indicator on top, there's zero. Back to two out. And that, uh, that should be it. Nothing, uh, nothing really crazy. Uh, for those of you who have done this type of work before, it's a pretty simple setup, uh, but it's pretty repeatable. And uh, I'm holding, uh, I'm holding about, uh, eh, right now, just about a half a thousandths. Uh, on the diameter, uh, which is which is plenty. It's a, it's a little bit oversized because it gets a couple of uh, through holes for uh, for some thread studs. So uh, that's about it. All right, just to qualify these, I'm over here. I've got the uh, Vermont gauge set uh, open, and my uh, finished diameter is 302, and this is a uh, minus set. Uh, those of you who haven't uh, use plug gauges before. Uh, we are about uh, ground two tenths under so if this goes through then that is the uh, that's the size of the hole and if the next size up doesn't go through then uh, you're good. So I'm going to take the 302 out and uh, and it just fits on there a little bit of a, a little bit of a tight fit but it's still on there. I'm going to go to the 303 and she doesn't even want to go in there. So this is technically 3028 and she doesn't go through. So 302 is the uh, the finished diameter and that's what we've got. So that's how uh, that's how that works. It's a pretty good setup for uh, precision uh, boring.